a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. John Denver Henry John Deutschendorf Jr. known professionally as John Denver, was an American singer-songwriter, record producer, actor, activist, and humanitarian, whose greatest commercial success was as a solo singer. After traveling, and living in numerous locations while growing up in his military family, Denver began his music career with folk music groups during the late 1960s. Starting in the 1970s, he was one of the most popular acoustic artists of the decade and one of its best-selling artists. By 1974, he was firmly established as one of America's best-selling performers, and all music has described Denver as among the most beloved entertainers of his era. Denver recorded and released approximately 300 songs, about 200 of which he composed, with total sales of over 33 million records worldwide. He recorded and performed primarily with an acoustic guitar and sang about his joy in nature, his disdain for city life, his enthusiasm for music, and his relationship trials. Denver's music appeared on a variety of charts, including country music, the Billboard Hot 100, and adult contemporary, in all earning him 12 gold and 4 platinum albums. With his signature songs, Take Me Home, Country Roads, Annie's Song, Rocky Mountain High, Calypso, Thank God I'm a Country Boy, and Sunshine on My Shoulders. Denver appeared in several films and television specials during the 1970s and 1980s. He continued to record in the 1990s, also focusing on environmental issues by lending vocal support to space exploration and testifying in front of Congress in protest against censorship in music. He lived in Aspen, Colorado, for much of his life and was known for his love of Colorado, which he sang about numerous times. In 1974 Denver was named Poet Laureate of the state. The Colorado State Legislature also adopted Rocky Mountain High as one of its two state songs in 2007. Denver was an avid pilot who died aged 53 in a single fatality crash while flying his experimental route and long easy canard aircraft. Early Years Henry John Deutschendorf Jr. was born in Roswell, New Mexico, to Captain Henry John Dutch Deutschendorf, a United States Army Air Forces pilot stationed at Roswell Arf and his wife, Irma Louise. Years later, as a lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Air Force, Deutschendorf Sr. would set three speed records in the B-58 Hustler bomber and earn a place in the Air Force Hall of Fame. He met and married his Oklahoma sweetheart. In his autobiography, Take Me Home, Denver described his life as the eldest son of a family shaped by a stern father who could not show his love for his children. Because Denver's father was in the military and his family moved often, it was difficult for him to make friends and fit in with other children of his own age. Constantly being the new kid was troubling for the introverted Denver, and he grew up always feeling as though he should be somewhere else, but never knowing where that right place was. While the family was stationed at Davis Monthan AFB in Tucson, Arizona, Denver was a member of the Tucson, Arizona Boys Chorus for two years. Denver was happy living in Tucson, but his father was then transferred to Maxwell AFB in Montgomery, Alabama, then in the midst of the Montgomery boycotts. The family later moved to Carswell AFB in Fort Worth, Texas, where Denver graduated from Arlington Heights High School. Fort Worth was a distressing experience for Denver and in his third year of high school, he drove his father's car to California to visit family friends and begin his music career, but his father flew to California in a friend's jet, and Denver reluctantly returned to complete his schooling. At the age of 11, Denver received an acoustic guitar from his grandmother. He learned to play well enough to perform at local clubs by the time he was in college. He adopted the surname, Denver. After the capital of his favorite state, Colorado, he decided to change his name when Randy Sparks, founder of the new Christy Minstrels, suggested that Deutschendorf wouldn't fit comfortably on a marquee. Denver studied architecture at Texas Tech University in Lubbock and sang in a folk music group called the Alpine Trio. While pursuing architectural studies, he was also a member of the Delta Tau Delta fraternity. Denver dropped out of the Texas Tech School of Engineering in 1963, and moved to Los Angeles, where he sang in folk clubs. In 1965, Denver joined the Mitchell Trio, replacing founder Chad Mitchell, which later became Denver, Boise, and Johnson. In 1969, 
Denver abandoned the band life to pursue a solo career and released his first album, for RCA Records, Rhymes and Reasons. Two years prior, Denver had made a self-produced demo recording of some of the songs he played at his concerts. He included in the demo a song he had written called, Babe I Hate To Go, later renamed, Leaving On A Jet Plane. Denver made several copies, and gave them out as presents for Christmas. Producer Mill Token, who produced records for the Mitchell Trio and the high-profile folk group Peter, Paul and Mary, had become Denver's producer as well. Oaken brought the unreleased, Jet Plane, song to Peter, Paul, and Mary. Their version of the song hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Denver's composition also made it to the UK number two spot in February 1970, having also made number one on the US cash box chart in December 1969. Although RCA did not actively promote rhymes and reasons with the tour, Denver himself embarked on an impromptu supporting tour throughout the Midwest, stopping at towns and cities as the fashion took him, offering to play free concerts at local venues. When he was successful in persuading a school, college, American Legion Hall, or local coffee house to let him play, he would spend a day or so distributing posters in the town and could usually be counted upon to show up at the local radio station, guitar in hand, offering himself for an interview. With his foot in the door as author of, Leaving on a Jet Plane, he was often successful in gaining some valuable promotional airtime, usually featuring one or two songs performed live. Some venues would let him play for the, door. Others restricted him to selling copies of the album at intermission and after the show. After several months of this constant low-key touring schedule, however, he had sold enough albums to persuade RCA to take a chance on extending his recording contract. He had also built a sizable and solid fan base, many of whom remained loyal throughout his career. Denver recorded two more albums in 1970, Take Me to Tomorrow and Whose Garden Was This, including a mix of songs he had written and cover versions of other artists' compositions. Career Peak His next album, Poems, Prayers, and Promises, was a breakthrough for him in the US thanks in part to the single, Take Me Home, Country Roads, which went to number two on the Billboard charts despite the first pressings of the track being distorted. Its success was due in part to the efforts of his new manager, future Hollywood producer Jerry Weintraub, who signed Denver in 1970. Weintraub insisted on a reissue of the track and began a radio airplay campaign that started in Denver, Colorado. Denver's career flourished from then on, and he had a series of hits over the next four years. In 1972, Denver scored his first top 10 album with Rocky Mountain High, with its title track reaching the top 10 in 1973. Between 1974 and 1975, Denver experienced an impressive chart dominance, with a string of four number one songs and three number one albums. In the 1970s, Denver's onstage appearance included long blonde hair and granny glasses. His embroidered shirts emblazoned with images commonly associated with the American West were created by the designer and applique artist Anna Zapp. His manager, Jerry Weintraub, insisted on a significant number of television appearances, including a series of half-hour shows in the United Kingdom. Despite Denver's protests at the time, I've had no success in Britain. I mean none. Weintraub explained to Maury North of Newsweek in December 1976, I knew the critics would never go for John. I had to get him, to the people. After appearing as a guest on many shows, Denver went on to host his own variety-slash-music specials, including several concerts, from Red Rocks Amphitheatre near Denver. His seasonal special, Rocky Mountain Christmas, was watched by more than 60 million people and was the highest-rated show for the ABC network at that time. His live concert special, An Evening with John Denver, won the 1974-1975 Emmy for Outstanding Special, Comedy Variety or Music. When Denver ended his business relationship, because of Weintraub's focus on other projects, Weintraub threw Denver out of his office and accused him of Nazism. Denver would later tell Arthur Tobia, when the latter transcribed his autobiography, I'd bend my principles to support something he wanted of me. And of course, every time you bend your principles whether, because you don't want to worry about it, or, because you're afraid to stand up, for fear of what you might lose you sell your soul to the devil. Denver was also a guest star on The Muppet Show, the beginning of the lifelong friendship between Denver and Jim Henson that spawned two television specials with The Muppets. 
He also tried acting, appearing in the Colorado Cattle Caper episode of the McLeod television movie on February 24, 1974, and starring in the 1977 film Oh, God, opposite George Burns. Denver hosted the Grammy Awards five times in the 1970s and 1980s, and guest hosted The Tonight Show on multiple occasions. In 1975, Denver was awarded the Country Music Association's Entertainer of the Year Award. At the ceremony, the outgoing Entertainer of the Year, Charlie Rich, presented the award to his successor. But in protest of what he considered the inappropriateness of Denver's selection, Rich set fire to the envelope containing the official notification of the award. However, Denver's music was defended by country singer Kathy Mattea, who told Alana Nash of Entertainment Weekly, a lot of people write him off as lightweight, but he articulated a kind of optimism, and he brought acoustic music to the forefront, bridging folk, pop, and country in a fresh way. People forget how huge he was worldwide. In 1977, Denver co-founded The Hunger Project with Werner Erhard and Robert W. Fuller. He served for many years, and supported the organization until his death. Denver was also appointed by President Jimmy Carter to serve on the President's Commission on World Hunger, writing the song, I Want to Live, as its theme song. In 1979, Denver performed, Rhymes and Reasons, at the Music for UNICEF concert. Royalties from the concert performances were donated to UNICEF. His father taught him, to fly in the mid-1970s, which led to a reconciliation between father and son. In 1980, Denver and his father, by then a lieutenant colonel, co-hosted an award-winning television special, The Higher We Fly, The History of Flight. It won the Osborne Award, from the Aviation Slash Space Writers Association, and was honored by the Houston Film Festival. Political Activism Denver became outspoken in politics in the mid-1970s. He expressed his ecologic interests in the epic 1975 song, Calypso, which is an ode to the eponymous exploration ship and team of environmental activist Jacques Cousteau. In 1976, he campaigned for Jimmy Carter, who became a close friend and ally. Denver was a supporter of the Democratic Party and of a number of charitable causes for the environmental movement, the homeless, the poor, the hungry, and the African AIDS crisis. He founded the charitable Windstar Foundation in 1976 to promote sustainable living. His dismay at the Chernobyl disaster led to precedent-setting concerts in parts of communist Asia and Europe. During the 1980s, Denver was critical of the Reagan administration, but he remained active in his campaign against hunger, for which Reagan awarded Denver the Presidential World Without Hunger Award in 1985. Denver's criticism of the conservative politics of the 1980s was expressed in his autobiographical folk rock ballad. Let us begin. Denver was also critical of the Republican-dominated Congress and American conservatism of the 1990s. He denounced the National Rifle Association as a corrupt political machine that could buy off politicians, and in an open letter to the media, he wrote that he opposed oil drilling in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Denver had battled to expand the refuge in the 1980s, and he praised President Bill Clinton for his opposition to the proposed drilling. The letter? which he wrote in the midst of the 1996 presidential election, was one of the last he ever wrote. Denver was also on the board of governors of the National Space Society for many years. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries Would you like to know more?